Hello students, uh, this is an overview uh, or a support video for uh, working on assignment one. Uh, first of all, I'd encourage you to read the assignment notes that have been posted. And this gives the background of uh, what you are expected to do and why we are making the decisions that we are making. Uh, so you will read that we will be building on the orientation assignment. So what we're going to do is step one, um, build on orientation assignment and create a vector abstract data type. Now, we are going to use the dynamic array that you created and which was placed in the main program. We are going to move it into a class of its own. And I'm going to just quickly show you the template. So here's the template that you've been given. And as you can see, the main program no longer has the dynamic array, but it creates uses the vector uh, data type uh, to create a database. Now, this is something that you have done in your object-oriented programming uh, class prior. And the two angle brackets that you see here are, um, are, are possible because of our use of class templates. So we can create a vector of any type. We can create a vector of integer. We can create a vector ADT of uh, Boolean, or we can create it of any user-defined type like song. So as you can see, a lot of familiar things are there. We have the same song.h, the same song.cpp. So we are going to create a vector of songs. And the underlying, uh, the underlying data structure that we are going to use is the, is, the, um, is the dynamic array. And all of that, which was there in the main program, has now moved to this class vector. Uh, and here are the, uh, of course, the fields of this class. And he, these are the methods. Now, the methods should be very familiar to you because if you have used uh, and practiced the lab, the standard template library in C++ offers a vector data type, which has got pushback, popback, and, uh, and insert and uh, remove uh, and so on. And so a uh, sort is also part of the vector database and search. So we are going to mimic those features of the standard template library vector data type by creating from scratch our own um, uh, class. And we can use this class to instantiate uh, objects of this type. Now, some things that might seem new to you, which may or may, which may, you may need revision, is that this is a class template, which means when an object of this class is instantiated, then then just like in the main program, you have seen we said, can you create for us a vector ADT of song? So whatever we substitute here is what would go into um, is what would go into this T. So uh, if it's song, then song is going to get substituted here. So it's a data array of pointer of a double pointer to a song. And all of these return types are going to be uh, song. So you can just presume that a simple substitution will happen at compile time. So your task is to implement some of these functions. Your task is not to now worry about the main program, which is given to you, but it's going to be, how can I implement these? What do you need to implement? Some of the code as usual is given to you. And then here you've got the to do, which tells you, please impl implement uh, the resize method and the pop and the pop back and the description of these methods is given here. So if you're familiar and if you've practiced your lab, then you will know that pop actually uh, returns a copy of the last element of the vector. Pop back actually deletes it. Print will just print using the two string method. Size gives the size of the vector using the count um, variable that you will be updating. Sort uses the same selection sort mechanism. Uh, to sort the vector based upon chart index. Now, here I'd like to point out that we are using a functor or a function object, and we are instantiating a function object called less, which is of type less than. Now, you don't need to worry about writing the function object, but here it has been given to you. Your task is to simply use some of these code strategically to make the program work. How does this less than work? It works again. It's a template class, and it takes uh, 
typically when we create a vector of type song it would take two song objects and then it would compare two song objects now how does the less than operator compare two song objects in order to see this we will go into um, the song class and see that we have overloaded the less than operator so you might need to go down into the song uh, class in order to implement some of the features that are needed for your air vector ADT. And that's the kind of learning that you'll be doing. The task here is not for you to read, to write everything, but for you to understand how each of these layers works and how it interacts with each other and to practice some of the C++ features like templates and functors and, and all of that. Now, I would like to point that the sort here is a selection sort. So, um, the sort is a selection sort and, uh, and all of this code has been given to you. And therefore, when you use the less than operator here, it's actually, uh, where is the less than operator here? Oh, um, yeah, you actually need to uh, add one statement here to compare objects. So while most of the code has been given to you, let me back up and say most of the code is given to you. There's just one statement that you need to add here to compare to uh, uh, two objects from the database. And that would not be uh, too much of a problem. Size just returns the count. Now let's look at some of the functions that you need to write. Popback would remove from the vector or remove from the data array because you are working at the level of the data array, would remove the last element of the data array. Pushback would add an element to the data array. So, so um, and then you need to take care that it increments the size of the vector, so increment count by one. There is a method called resize, and I just like to dwell a little bit on this. What we're starting off with, if you read the notes, you will see that the reason why we're using a dynamic array is because it allows us to uh, help ourselves to more memory during runtime. So initially, when we create the uh, when we create this dynamic array, we have declared the size to be equal to two, which means it can only hold two songs. Now that's not enough because if you look at the data file songs data that has got a hundred. And then if we've got a larger database, double the database, and that's got 200 songs. So, um, so how is two songs going to be enough? What we are going to do is we are going to resize the dynamic array as we go. So initially, we start off with a dynamic array and allocate from the heap two songs. But if we are filling the database and we find we need more, we are going to create a copy uh, in the res This is what resize is going to do. It's going to create a it's going to create a new data array from the heap, double the size of the previous one, copy the information from the old one to the new, and then delete the old one. So this is a bit of a trick, which is very simple, but it allows us not to start off with a ginormous database which we are not using. As we move along the assignments, we will change the size two to size fifty. But size two was only placed there for you to see that. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is a standard mechanism that's used in data structures, and you also then think if we keep the size too low, then uh, and then copy and recopy and resize the the vector, then a lot of efficiency of our uh, of our application gets lost and the complexity increases. Uh, and, and then I would leave you to reflect upon how does this affect the complexity if every two songs you're actually going to go get yourself a new array and do the copying <clears throat> and so on and, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth in terms of uh, the big O notation as in the size of the database grows very large, how does it affect the runtime efficiency? So this is part of our a primary task in the database class, in the uh, data structures class, to analyze the efficiency. And that's why this was thrown in here. 
Now, what else are we doing? We are going to... Uh, so, the, the main program, basically, the algorithm of the main program is going to stay the same for the next three assignments. We are going to create a database. We are going to count the number of elements in this database. Um, data counts lets us know that. We are going to sort the database based off of this less than function object. The key is going to be chart position. So when you uh, run your program or when you look at your first output file that's been provided for you, you see all of this is sorted according to chart position. Um, so these two output files have been given to you so that you can compare your output to check if you have got all the pieces in place. Um, and that's why you please don't change this main program because this is how your output is going to look like. So let's go back to sorting the database. You sort the database and the, and the function, selection sort function returns the number of steps taken. So you have a count of how efficient is this sorting in terms of the number of steps. And then you can uh, try to come up with the relationship between n, which is the size of the database, with the number of steps that were taken for the sorting and see if you can establish a relationship. We are going to run this program twice, the first time with song.database and the second time with song, uh, song database uh, double, song data double dot text. The output dot text is, uh, is the output when you run the first file, songs data. Output two is when you run the second file, which is songs two data. So as you can see, if I look at this, the sort, it has taken two, four, nine, five, zero steps to sort a database of 100 songs. And when I go into output two, this has taken 19,000 steps to sort a database of 200. So this is the kind of analysis that we are going to be doing in this class. All right, so once we sort the database, we're going to print it, and then we are going to insert a new song. Uh, so this is, uh, so remember with vectors, Unlike arrays, we can insert elements uh, in the middle of the database and the rest of the elements are going to get scooted right if you're going to insert. Uh, and if we remove an element, then all the elements have got to be scooted uh, left. And that's how vectors work. So you are going to be practicing, um, first of all, pushing it back, which is inserting it at the end, which is very easy. And think about how many steps it would take. Then um, try to remove it and think about how many steps this is going to take and check that it's the operations are done uh, correctly. Now insert this is going to in, insert the song at the fifth position and that's why I've called it. But know that index number five actually is going to start with zero. So you're going to end up putting this in the sixth position. So in inside the vector. So it's going to go 0 through 5. If you put 5 here, then this song is going to go into the sixth position. Now, uh, the chart number of this, I have deliberately used 5, and it may seem initially confusing. Know that this is the chart position. When I create the song, number 5 is the chart position. When I insert, I'm inserting it into the sixth position i.e. index position 5. Now, that means whatever two things have happened here. There was already something, uh, a song, which was in the fifth place with a chart position, um, with a chart position 5. And this song, so now we are going to end up having two songs, chart position 5, one is going to be located at position 5 and the other is going to be located at position 6. So this, but we are not going to change uh, or, uh, or resort our database. We're just going to leave it as it is. The updating of the chart positions is going to be done in the next assignment. For now, we will insert. We know that there's a double element and we're going to leave it as it is. Um, now let's move to remove. We create, we get the uh, element, the song at position, at index position four i.e. at position at, uh, at, uh, in the fifth place. It's not that song up there, but another song. Remove the song at the fifth place and, and then uh, check that the database has gotten reduced. Search for the song. 
And if you find it, say, I found it, otherwise I did not find it. You do not need to concern yourself that much. All you need to know, all you need to do is make sure that your insertions and removals are working. Adjustment of chart position is something that you don't need to worry for this assignment. Now, the last thing is that we are going to search by title. Remember, our database is sorted according to um, chart position. So if you are going to search for this song, we are going to be pretty much searching from this beginning of the database all the way to the end to see if we can find it. And that's what found tell, tells us. Integer found contains the index of the position where the song is found. If it's not found, it returns a negative one. So if we've removed the song, you will note that uh, the output will say not found because the song has gotten deleted. So um, just to recap, the main program is written for you. Uh, some of the code, like uh, the func functors, are given to you. You have both the output files to compare your output. You have two sets of data. One is song um, songs.database, songsdata.txt, songs data double. And this one, the songs2, is an additional one which we can remove because we're not, you, you can, if you find it in your template, you feel, feel free to use it just for trial runs, but it's not part of the output. And then you are given the uh, song.h and song.cpb.h. Um, a lot of that code is given to you. And then note that these files are no longer less than .cpp, but now because we're using templates, we're going to all use the extension .h, so it's less than cpp.h. All the inclusions, everything is done for you. So all you need to focus on is the to-do part where you will implement some of these methods, right?